Have you fallen into a rut? Did you have the best of intentions when New Year's was here and you were the creativity and the inspiration was just flowing and you decided this was the year. This is the year I'm going to get my shit together. Whatever that thing looks like, you are going to do it this year. Was that you? I think that was most of us. <laughs> I find that it's around this time every year, around March, April, that first quarter has completed and spring is about here. That's about the time that we most of us have fallen off the wagon. Whatever intentions we had set for the new year, we got lazy with them, we've forgotten about them, we haven't really established those habits. If you are one of the perfect human beings on earth that this is not a problem for, this video is not for you. <laughs> but if you're like the rest of us, mere humans, this is for you. Stick around because we're going to be talking about that and more today. Veronica and welcome back to the wholeness shift if you like this kind of video or if you're into spirituality or intentional living take a minute to hit the subscribe button I wouldn't want you to miss all the good stuff that we have coming up I've decided to make April a gist month a get your shit together month so I'm going to be doing a series on just that how to reset your life and get back on track and get your shit together Today I'm going to do a video on a self and spirit reset. Week two will be on a body reset. Week three will be a money reset. And week four will be a home reset. So you're not going to want to miss those. Hit the subscribe button so you can come back and check that out. It's time to reinvigorate our lives and refresh it with some fresh inspiration. Well, if you've found that you've fallen off track, what you need to realize is that it's not that big of a deal. We're all human. We all fall off track. It's no big deal to have lost your way for a little bit. Welcome back. Get back up. Get on the horse. Keep riding. So you're probably wondering, how do I do this? How do I get back on track? What do I do? All of these resolutions, they just fell by the wayside. So what do I do? How do I get back to that? Step number one is that you need to remember the why. There was a reason that you wanted this thing. Whatever the thing is, there's a reason why you wanted to accomplish that goal. So get in touch with that because that why is what's going to help you tap back into the inspiration for the thing. Step two is you need to tap into the feeling of what it would feel to have that thing or to accomplish that goal. Whenever you're talking about manifesting or law of attraction, the feeling is going to be what triggers the response. When you tap into the feeling of how that thing will make you feel, that's what magnetizes that intention so that you can draw the results to you. Setting the intention plants the seed puts it out there into the void. As Abraham Hicks would say, it puts it into the vortex. When you get in touch with the feelings that it will make you feel and then you work on living out those feelings and carrying that with you on a daily basis, that's what magnetizes that intention and draws it to you. So for example, when I'm talking about how I want to reach my goal weight, I've already lost 83 pounds. I'm getting closer to my goal weight. But this whole time, as I'm talking about reaching my goal weight and going on this journey, I've needed to tap into how does that make me feel? If I imagine stepping on the scale and being at that goal weight or fitting into that size pants, how does it make me feel? Well, it made me feel proud of doing all the hard work and reaching my goal. It would make me feel healthy because I know that I've done my body a service by getting all of that extra weight off. It would make me feel confident because I know I look better and I carry myself better. And I think it would make me feel inspired. It would make me feel inspired seeing that I saw something, I want it, I went for it, I got it, I did the hard work, it happened. And it would inspire me to go try that with something else. This thing, this goal weight will make me feel proud and confident 
and inspired and happy and peaceful and all of those things and healthy, I've charged it with that. So it's vibrating at that level. So now if on a daily basis, I work on feeling those feelings, if I sit here and I'm like, okay, what would proud feel like? You know, and I, I feel proud. What would it feel like to feel proud and healthy and confident? And I feel those feelings and I take those feelings with me through the day. That thing is now a match for me and it will come to me much easier. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, leave me a comment. I would be happy to talk about this more. Okay, you remember your why, and then you work on feeling those feelings so that you can draw it to yourself. Okay, let's talk about how to create new habits. Making new habits is hard. It's so hard. Hard, hard, hard. You know, I don't have to tell you. I have four tips today that may help you make it a little bit easier, though. This first one, habit stacking, it's all the rage right now. I hear people talking about it all the time. This is something that I've done for decades, and I have taught my patients to do as well. You know, you have people come in, and they just can't remember to take that medication that they need to take, and I help them with that. The first one is habit stacking. If you don't know what that is, habit stacking is where you combine a new habit on the back of an already existing habit. You capitalize on the momentum that you have from this thing that you're already in the habit of doing, and it helps you create the habit of the new thing. For example, I have patients who can't remember to take their medications, so I tell them to take their pill box and put it on top of their pillow because you can't go to bed unless you lay down on top of the pill box and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot to take my pills. Or if you are in the habit of making coffee every single morning, and you want to start meditating, but you just can never remember. And then you're halfway through your day and you're like, crap, I didn't meditate again. Take your earbuds and put them right on top of the Keurig so that you go into the kitchen, you look at your coffee maker, and there are your earbuds. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. And you go do it. Or a bottle of vitamins that you can't remember to take every day or whatever it may be. You are already in the habit of making coffee. There's no way you're going through your day without making your coffee. So capitalize on that and put the new thing with it so that that triggers that. I used to know somebody who wanted to work on praying every day. She could never remember to pray. And to her, it was important to pray on her knees. She wanted to get down at the bedside on her knees, say her morning prayers. Well, she could never remember to do it. <laughs> And it was frustrating her. So I knew that she was a smoker, which, bad habit. But it worked for her in this situation because there was no way she was going to start her day without going for a cigarette. So I suggested that she put her cigarettes and lighter underneath her bed. So in order to smoke, she had to get down on her knees, look under her bed, grab her cigarettes. And then she was already there. She might as well just take a few minutes and pray. It worked for her. So... Habit stacking. Number two, set appointments in your calendar. Use this technology that you have in your phone. Set a reminder, set uh, an appointment in your calendar. I prefer to use the calendar. It works a little bit better for me, but I set appointments for everything, everything, especially as I'm starting a new habit. I will set a time for that thing every single day and just have it repeat. Yeah, especially as we get older, we don't remember things as well. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't remember things as well. So I have to set reminders in my phone for everything. No shame in that. Do what works for you. Number three, use your Alexa or your Google. Most of us have one of these at this point, And I set reminders all day long for little stuff. Like I have one set right now so that she'll remind me tonight at 6 o'clock to take the trash to the curb because it's Sunday and I'll probably forget. So use her every morning, you know, have her set a reminder every single morning at whatever time to remind you to meditate or to remind you to do your Zumba. Number four, get an accountability buddy. There's something to be said for friends that will hold your feet to the fire and keep you accountable in a loving and kind way, of course. I don't mean mean, but that will ask you, you know, how's it going? How's that diet going? Or... Um, how are you doing with watching your carbs or 
um, hey, do you want to go to yoga with me? I know that that was important to you. How have you been doing with that? Would you like to go to yoga? That kind of thing. Now let's take a few minutes to talk about refreshing your spirit and the energy within your life. Has anyone told you that you, yes you, are the one who is responsible for creating the look and the feel of your life? I mean, duh. <laughs> but sometimes you need to hear it out loud. Sometimes you need someone to say that to you because it's easy as humans to fall into a victim role as if we're powerless and hopeless and it just is what it is, so might as well wallow in it and feel sorry for ourselves and wish we could change. Hmm. No, you create this. You are the author and creator of your life. You are the artist painting this painting. So if the painting looks like crap, it's your fault. Get a new canvas and start painting a different color. Sometimes you just have to do a control alt delete and have an, a complete pattern interrupt and reset. And it's okay to not be the person that you were yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago. It's kind of the goal. If you're the same person that you were before, there's a problem. <laughs> Grow, expand, and be okay with taking an eraser to the whiteboard and wiping out what was and creating something more beautiful, something that is more in alignment with who you are, something that sparks joy in you and lights up your soul. Here are five things that might help you reset your spirit. Take a mental health day from work. Take a vacation day. I actually did that for tomorrow. I was really sick a few weeks ago with the flu, and then I've had a few stressful weeks at work, and I just needed a day. Sometimes we just need a day. So tomorrow I took a vacation day just so that I can control alt delete and feed my spirit a little bit. Did a whole video on self-care. If you're interested in watching that, I'll link it. Maybe you need to use your day off for a life admin day. Maybe there are a lot of tasks and errands and phone calls and everything that you need to make your life work like your life. Maybe you have a lot of those things that have stacked up and you just need a couple free hours to make those calls, run the errands, you need to go to the BMV, whatever it is. Maybe that's how you need to use your day off and that will give you more peace because you now have those things accomplished. Or maybe you just need to lay on the couch and binge Netflix all day. Do whatever you need to do to recharge your batteries. Number two, figure out a morning routine that works for you and that will help set up your day to where you can incorporate some of these new habits and these resolutions that you want to stick with. Because if you are sticking with them and you're accomplishing your goals and you're working on these little things that are important to you, that's going to feed your spirit. There's something to be said for when you are living your life and starting your day in a very intentional manner that grounds you and sets you up for success. Number three, do a digital purge. Clean up your digital spaces your phone, tablet, computer, clean it up. Get rid of all of those old pictures or memes or videos and freshen up your playlists. Find some new music that inspires you or that touches your heart and get it on there. Get rid of some old stuff, you know, spring clean your digital spaces. Do a refresh. Clean out your contact. Do you really need the phone numbers for all of those X's in your phone or the pizza place that you used five years ago when you lived in another state? No, you don't. Clean it out. Get rid of it. Clean out your friends list on social media. Clean up your timeline and your feed. Anything that tempts you to act in a way that's counterproductive to your goals, like um, if your goal is to rein in your budget and do better with your spending, then get rid of any of the people, places, companies, etc. that are on your feed that do lots of hauls or that advertise new products that you want that tempt you to spend money. Get rid of them. Unsubscribe to whatever is not adding value to your life and your day. Number four, I've been using Unroll Me, and I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. This isn't sponsored, but it's a free service that kind of helps clean up your inbox. It will help you unsubscribe from all the things that you want to unsubscribe from, but the things you want to keep, you can decide if those are things that you want to see in your inbox, or would you like Unroll Me to send you like one daily digest of all of the other emails. It's really handy actually because you don't get 
25 emails from various companies, you'll get one email and you can just scroll through and see what they all had to say. And as always, you know that I'm going to say the number one way to feed your spirit, meditate. I'll link in the description to the meditation video I did last week. It will benefit you. Get into it because that will feed your spirit big time. Other ways that you can feed your spirit, go connect with family or friends. Spend some time filling your cup. Make little decisions every single day that lend themselves to the look, feel, and quality of the life that you want to live. And then design your daily life around those little routines and habits. And your spirit will stay refreshed. Your life will begin to take on the quality of life that you want to live. And you're going to be back on track with those goals and resolutions. I hope this helped you. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, and I will see you next week for a body reset, how to reset your body. Until then.